Karici is a theater director, a playwright, artistic director, not only of uh, a company, Capo uh, Trave, that he uh, co, uh, uh, co uh, organized, but also uh, the Kilowatt Festival, uh, which is based in Sase uh, Polkro. Uh, he's also project manager and co curator of a big uh, project, uh, uh, B Spec Active. Uh, which is now in the second uh, round of, of its um, functioning. He's also uh, written a book, uh, uh, co-authored with Lucia Franchi, called The Spectator is a Visionary, so we can see that uh, kind of keywords in uh, Luca's work is audience engagement, uh, active participation, but first and foremost, uh, active spectatorship. Uh, so, uh, Luke is going to talk about uh, uh, what participation means uh, today in the context of the overwhelming uh, and omnipresent requests uh, for audience development, building a engagement in with the arts, uh, by using many examples and experiences uh, of uh, his work, and uh, all is going to be viewed through a political perspective of uh, cultural democracy. Uh, so we have envisaged 40 to 45 minutes of his uh, talk, and then we can later on have 15 to 20 minutes for uh, discussion. And uh, I will stop now talking about what Luca is going to talk about, and we'll give floor uh, uh, to Luca to uh, give us uh, his presentation and his uh, in views uh, from his work, uh, not only as a researcher, but as artist and uh, cultural manager, producer, etc. So, Luca, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction and thank you to uh, Cultura Nova, to all the other partners for the invitation. I'm very proud and happy to be here in uh, Zagreb. So, uh, mm, yes, it's important to say that uh, um, my point of view is not the point of view of uh, uh, a person uh, that is study this phenomenon because it's not my specific profile. So I'm starting from some experiences and uh, what I will give to you, I try to express some ideas, some concept that I tried after these experiences. So it's more a practical point of view. And you know, I will try to also to, to focus some specific topics and ideas. Um, first of all, I want to say that the, the picture was done by me of the cheetah, but <laughs> because uh, I think probably it will be the best thing of the afternoon. <laughs> I hope no, but okay. Okay, so I start. Uh, uh, give me really five minutes for telling you which is. Uh, what is Kilowatt Festival and uh, why is, uh, is linked to the topic of participation we are speaking about. Uh, is this working? No. I cannot use this one? Ah, okay, perfect. So it's, uh, this festival is a multidisciplinary festival. It was founded by me and by uh, Lucia Franchi that she She's my wife, but at this moment she was not, uh, but later, yes, in 2003 in, uh, in San Sepolcro. Okay, uh, this city is a really small city of 16,000 inhabitants. Uh, I prevent you, you will, be cra will become crazy with me because I move a lot. So I try to, to don't move too much, but it will not be easy for me. Okay, so it's a small city of uh, 16,000 inhabitants. It's in Tuscany but uh, on the border with other three regions in Italy, Emilia Romagna, Umbria, and, uh, and Marche. Uh, probably the most known uh, you know, cultural seat of the city, um, after Kilowatt, is uh, <laughs> this, uh, the, the fact that was the city where was born uh, one of the most important painters of the, Renaissance, of the Italian Renaissance, uh, Piero della Francesca. And the resurrection is one of his masterpieces. Is, uh, is in the local museum, the Civic Museum of San Sepolcro. So now here you have to recognize who I was. Uh, uh, many years ago, 
and many years ago. <laughs> now, of course, this is me and uh, Lucia and another friend of us in the moment in which we founded uh, this, uh, this activity in 2003. Uh, we are also a company, so we produce some shows, but it's not the topic of our discussion now, so we'll go on. And um, what's happened in 2006? Uh, after four editions of the festival that uh, were not so successful, telling the truth, <laughs> we had this problem, how we can engage people of the city, how they can participate to our festival uh, uh, in a big number than it was at that moment. So we had this idea to, uh, to put some paper on the chairs uh, and in this, in this paper wor was written, uh, do you want to become a visionary? Uh, so it's written in Italian, but uh, what is written is uh, you don't need to have any previous experience in performing arts uh, or in theater or dance, only to be curious on that. It was written, you don't have to be a professional on that. The, and so the, the, visionaries, the project of the visionaries started. At, at the beginning, really, we, it was not clear for us what we were doing, telling the truth. But Wednesday after Wednesday, because the meeting of the visionaries were in Wednesday night, uh, I was there in this small uh, room. Uh, at the beginning, there were nine or ten people, no more. Listening to them, uh, there was um, a shopping seller, a professor of the local school, a student, uh, uh, um, some workers, one of them was working in a factory. So listening to them, speaking about theater and contemporary theater and contemporary dance, uh, discussing each other, what was better for me, in, in my opinion, this show was able to focus, on, and it was a surprise for me. So I was thinking, wow, this is what the theater has to be, I mean, it's, it was like a small, 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 very small atom in which people were putting art in the center of their everyday life, discussing about that and try to find an agreement for selecting some of the, of the shows to be presented on the festival. After 13 years, so we had more than 180 citizens of San Sepolcro that were visionaries for at least one year. So some of them, they remain in the group. Some of them, uh, they, they leave. Uh, we try to remain in contact with them also if they stop this uh, specific experience. So I don't go in the uh, details of the experience, but more or less we receive uh, 300 videos from professional companies from all around Italy each year. They start in uh, November. Next week they will start. They finish their work in April more or less, and they select, uh, as I was saying, nine shows. And they fill a specific uh, form in which they express uh, their point of view on the 300 shows they, they have, 300 videos they have seen during the years. Nine shows are invited to the festival, and they are presented in a specific section called uh, Selezione Visionari, so the shows selected by the visionari, and the day after, uh, each one of the three nights in which we present the shows selected by the visionary, we have a public discussion in the main square of San Sepolcro with everyone who wants to participate, of course, with the visionary and with the artists that were on stage the night before. And then we, we try to, to, to discuss about what we saw the, the night before. It's an experiment of collective intelligence, in our opinion, and strongly linked with also with this idea of democratic engagement, of course. Um, I will go through that later because uh, I have some big, uh, historical vision uh, on my speech. Um, with Louis Bonnet that we'll sp uh, we speak tomorrow, we discussed many times in the framework of the project that was quoted before, Be Spectacle, uh, about uh, uh, the role of the curators, of the artistic directors. I mean, with a project like that, uh, the, the role of the artistic director is completely changing. Luisa is used to say, um, usually the artistic director is like a priest, like a medium, like someone that is in the middle between uh, art uh, and people. And, and in this case, in which people become part of the process of selection, which is the role of the artistic director? What I like to say 
usually is uh, uh, that in this perspective, for me, I, I think at my work like a conductor of creativity. I mean, someone that has to facilitate uh, the interaction between arts and people. And I think it's uh, something that changed completely the point of view of my specific work, but it becomes much more interesting. The result, what you obtain by this type of process is much more than what you lose. These are some of the number of the festival. As you can see, it's not a big festival. It's a medium range festival. It's a festival more or less every year we host uh, 50 and something more uh, dance and theater and music shows, uh, more or less 70 performances, 5,000 uh, tickets sold. So it's not big numbers. Uh, it's a festival of a small city, but uh, you know it's very well frequented by many professionals and uh, critics and journalists. And, uh, and we produce many shows during the years, so we help also the creatives to, to develop their shows. And oh, this is part of our staff. And uh, here you can see some of the images of our previous edition, but not so interesting for our topic. But no, this one is interesting because participate is normal was the was the slogan of the last edition, so the claim of the last edition. Um, we, have, we are also a center for creative residences, so we host more or less 18 companies for two weeks uh, during the year, and uh, for each uh, company in residency, we try to develop a specific project for linking them with some specific target of local people. Um, if you want later, uh, I can tell you also some experience uh, among the most successful one. In 2014, we started this project called Bespectactive. It's a large scale cooperation project. Uh, we are the project leader. The first edition was with uh, 12 partners uh, in uh, nine European countries. And in last year, we were uh, financed for a second round. And now we have 19 partners in 15 countries. What is happening is that now, in the next edition of the project, at this moment, uh, we have uh, at least uh, 38, uh, probably something, something more, but I'm not sure, uh, groups of active spectators in all the different cities uh, that are part of the network. So the, the central part of the project is to create, in every venue of one of our partners, a group of active spectators in charge for uh, selecting part of the programming uh, of the theater or the festival uh, that are part of the network with many different uh, targets. Uh, so there are some of our partners only working with uh, uh, students, uh, some others uh, only with uh, dance, but you know, at the end, uh, the common point is this idea of active spectatorship. I mean, to give to the audience a role of decision maker. So the opportunity to select something, but at the end of a process, of course, because I think it's important to underline this aspect. We are not in a, you know, like in a um, TV show in which you vote something uh, uh, because you have uh, heard the song. It's not that, of course. It's a process in which they work together for a long period, they discuss each other, they express their point of view, and at the end, uh, you arrive to, to, the, to the selection. Uh, in Italy, now, we have uh, 11 group of uh, visionaries, so more than 400 people. So we are the smallest one, also if we were the first one, but the other one are in big, bigger city than us. Uh, for instance, in Milano, they are uh, 90. The group of visionaries of Milano, they are 90 people working together for this selection. But in general, what we are doing is that the call for the artist is the same. And then uh, the, all the groups are independent in their uh, choices. Uh, uh, no, I think it's important also to underline that everything <laughs> started from this uh, sentence, <laughs> this one by one of our technicians. I remember very clearly this moment, this night at the end of this edition of the festival, he said to me and to Lucia, yes, but you have to, you have to find something in which the, 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 the city feels that the festival is something of its own. 
And with this, uh, you know, <laughs> with this request, uh, I remember we went to holiday and then we started the, the project with the visionary. So I have a short video to show you uh, about uh, the visionary and then we will go to some uh, ideas. Il ruolo del visionario è colui che sceglie una parte della programmazione del Festival di Kilowatt. Capotrave Kilowatt lancia ogni anno un bando rivolto alle compagnie professioniste che rimane aperto più o meno da ottobre a dicembre e che poi appunto a dicembre si chiude e col nuovo anno a gennaio i visionari iniziano a lavorare. Al bando partecipano compagnie di tutta Italia che caricano i loro spettacoli presentandoli nel portale Sonar. Eh, siamo un gruppo eh, molto eterogeneo eh, che si, si suddivide in sottogruppi. 3-4 persone e, e si spartiscono quindi l'insieme delle proposte e all'interno di questi gruppi si esaminano questi video. E mi sono ritrovata spesso eh, con il mio piccolo gruppo a eh, riflettere sulle visioni che avevamo eh, avuto eh, degli spettacoli. Ogni gruppetto si ritrova, si organizza come meglio crede per guardare i video che gli competono, quindi ci si ritrova a casa dell'uno piuttosto che dell'altro, si fa l'aperitivo, la cena e quant'altro. L'inverno ce l'abbiamo assicurato, non ci annoiamo. Nelle, nella provincia eh, toscana in inverno facciamo Sappiamo questo. <ride> Mi piace parlare con gli altri, la parte della scelta e la cosa che mi piace è che c'è la possibilità di vedere tantissimi spettacoli. Generalmente il, il, il sottogruppo sceglie due o tre spettacoli da portare alla discussione collettiva insieme tutti a visionare tutto e a discutere molto animatamente anche litigando a volte anche con vari stress <ride> mamma mia un po' quello un pochino difficile scegliere questi video in quell'ambito eh, viene fatta poi quindi una seconda selezione da gruppo allargato di tutti i visionari siamo abbastanza bravi via il confronto ci arricchisce all'interno di questa viene fatta l'ultima scrematura che porta ai nove spettacoli scelti da noi i nove spettacoli che vengono scelti ogni anno dai visionari arrivano poi a Kilowatt Festival dove vanno in scena divisi in tre serate diverse, tre per ogni serata e la particolarità sta nel fatto che al mattino seguente le compagnie eh, incontrano i visionari e insieme a dei critici inizia un dibattito per eh, raccontarsi un po' le percezioni che i visionari hanno avuto durante lo spettacolo se erano le stesse che, se, che erano arrivate al momento della visione dello spettacolo tramite video è appunto paragonata a quella che poi eh, si è vista in scena nella sera. Il punto fondamentale dei visionari è quello di rendere i partecipanti eh, i cittadini della zona, di renderli comunque parte attiva. L'esperienza che oltre a curare persone eh, della Valtiberina eh, di diversa età, provenienza, formazione, eh, ha anche la, la, la capacità di animare, attivare dei processi di, di cittadinanza, di partecipazione anche eh, allargata. Un senso di comunità, un, un senso di appartenenza e un'intelligenza collettiva che cerca di migliorare le persone del luogo. Quindi è veramente un modo per condividere una, un interesse, ma condividerlo in modo piacevole. Stai dicendo di smettere? This is the background from, from where I speak. I think it was important to, to give you that, uh, you know, that, that in this information, because otherwise it's difficult to understand why uh, I think some of the things I will tell you now. Um, in general, uh, 
in 2012, 2013, we started to use this word, audience development, because the European Commission uh, uh, focused this specific goal among the four uh, main goals for the, for the European project. Of, of course, there are a lot of years that we are speaking about promotion, uh, marketing, activities for audience, but I think uh, this is one of the cases in which uh, uh, the politics were able to focus uh, something that really changed uh, the perspective in which uh, the professional are used to work. Usually it's every time the opposite. I mean, uh, things happen and then politics uh, understand that are happening. This is one of the cases in which politics pushed us uh, to change of mind that in my opinion was uh, interesting. Um, I would like to start from that. It seems very far, but probably is strongly, leak, uh, strongly linked with, uh, with our topics. Uh, in 1980, uh, there was this uh, sword duel among a theater critics and supporter of Sarah Bernard because uh, the theater critics w wrote something very bad about that. So this. Uh, uh, supported these spectators, challenged this theater critic, and at the end, uh, the blessed one was the theater critics, uh, the, the injured one, I mean, the injured one, sorry. Uh, 9th of May, we, we go 40 years after that, uh, there was the debut of Six Characters in Search of an Author, an author by Luigi Pirandello in the Valle Theater in Rome, and the uh, main part of the audience started shouting mental hospital, mental hospital for the authors and for the, and for the artists. I mean, uh, an audience uh, strongly reactive, <laughs> we, can, we can say, no? Probably if we had uh, an audience like this, uh, probably we don't need to, we don't need to speak uh, about audience development <laughs> because the, the context would be very different. But, you know, of course I'm joking, but I think, I really think that uh, uh, this idea is the consequence uh, of a problem that we have, of a crisis that we have. I mean, uh, the disinterest that we, we have to front uh, about art, but not only about art, of course, it's about uh, participation in general, of, uh, you know, uh, citizenship activities. So, less engagement, more attempts to engage people is a direct consequence. And uh, I think it's interesting, the, the sentence of my Alessandro Bollo, from, uh, the, is the director of the Polo del Novecento in Torino, when he says that uh, the utopia of democratization of, of culture has failed. And uh, in a context of reduced welfare, we have to take care of the sustainability of our activities. So it's also for that that the number of people that are attending uh, to a cultural event, it becomes central. Uh, uh, and this uh, nice phrase by Nils Riegold, uh, I think it can be also interesting. If all citizens are paying the party, how can the institution and support and initiatives ensure they feel invited to take part in it? I mean, the, the problem of who is paying uh, for what uh, we are using public money, I think is strongly linked with the concept of, uh, you know, uh, of the audience development, of the social relevance of culture. Uh, um, I think there are, usually when we do this type of uh, conferences, uh, uh, there is a moment in which we start speaking about uh, social media that changed our idea of being part of something, uh, uh, migrant crisis, I mean, uh, change of the population, so new needs. Uh, um, another central topic is the urbanization, so more people living in the big cities, so new requests uh, for the big city to respond to new, to new topics. Um, all these topics are very interesting, but it's not my cup of tea, telling the truth, so I want to speak with you, starting about this topic of uh, participation and audience uh, development from the point of view of the artistic reflection, and artistic and critical reflection. And I think that 
um, these two men, I think, can be interesting for us because uh, in 62, Umberto Eco wrote uh, this uh, important book that probably all of you know. Uh, it's Opera Aperta, and he wrote that the reader, and, or in this case, he, he was writing about reader, but I think it's the same for spectators, uh, is an active subject who creates a meaning about what the art artist intentionally has left indeterminate uh, for stimulating, stimulating uh, the, the, the reader or the spectators to an active interpretation. And some years later, uh, six years later, Roland Barthes wrote this famous essay, Le Mort de l'Auteur, uh, in which it's written that the reader of a book is the place, he used exactly this word, the place, where the unity of the text is produced. So the recipient of the art has the key, not the person who wrote the book or who made it. As you can understand, it's a completely change of perspective. I mean, we are not passive consumers of something, but we are active creators, or we go to, to complete the missing part of the piece of art. Um, this is Romeo Castellucci, one of the most important European directors, uh, and uh, uh, for me, when I, was, uh, when I was young, this sentence was really something, wow, enlightened me, because uh, he wrote that, I don't believe in the great enlightened artist who drops his eyes. The artist work uh, before the others. It is about sharpening the images and waiting for them, not to invent them. The artist prepares the ground. Uh, even the spectators wait uh, for the images. The only difference is that the spectators has the opportunity to see them in a more prepared time. But the spectator is the existential, existential sorry, condition of this age. Uh, to be a spectator means to rethink the lost language, the lost memory, and therefore to feel the need for a language and an invented time. The spectator is the artist. The most beautiful and interesting artworks imply the presence of the spectator as a creator of the missing part, that are no part existing in every great work waiting for a creation, okay, and so on. Mm, this is Stefan Kaegi from the, from the German group uh, Rimini Protocol, and probably the, both uh, Castellucci and Rimini Protocol are very well known, so I don't have to introduce uh, you them. Uh, and as you probably know, in the shows of Rimini Protocol, there is a strong interaction with the audience. So the audience is pushed to react uh, to some situation and uh, also so to create something uh, that you know, is also unknown for the artists uh, themselves. And uh, in this article, it's uh, in their uh, website, uh, speaking about the spectators reenacting uh, gun shooting happening 20 years ago in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Stefan Keji uh, wrote, uh, I suddenly think that this contemporary form of theater is closer to the classical dramatic theory of Aristotle, uh, that any play on the stage could be identification and catharsis not only in spirit, but also in the bodily sense. So, I mean, the experience of, uh, uh, of being a spectator is uh, something cathartic that engages also the body of the, of the spectators, not only you know, their mind uh, from the dark of a, of the, of a, theater, uh, of a theater room. Of course, uh, there are some political aspects. I'm not the person, uh, uh, um, you know, with a specific experience to speak about that, but, uh, you know, I'm a citizen like all of you, so I, for me it's very clear what we are doing in, in a political perspective. I mean, uh, uh, we are not simply following the taste of spectators. We are challenging them. I mean, we are inviting them uh, to be part of something, to express uh, some ideas, uh, to stay in contact with other people, and to find the final agreement together. We are using art uh, for a political, uh, you know, for a political goal. I mean, uh, to to give to the people the opportunity to participate. 
um, Jacques Rancière, before I, I put in the previous slides uh, one sentence by Jacques Rancière, he wrote this uh, fundamental book, The Spectateur Emancipé, and of course, uh, probably the, the, the word we have to add uh, uh, to this uh, really, <laughs> you know, enlightening title is uh, the emotionally emancipated. It's something that our common friends, Emmanuel Negri, every time use uh, from the University of Montpellier and other of our partners in this spectacle. I mean, we are using emotions for creating citizenship. Uh, I don't read the name, uh, the family name of this uh, very famous uh, psychologist, but you know, uh, I think it's important to underline uh, the idea, that the common idea, that the creativity is not the product of a genius, uh, but is uh, something uh, blowing in the wind, probably the previous uh, Nobel Prize uh, could see. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's a product of social system, not of, in individual person. And also Pierre Bourdieu suggests something similar in uh, the idea that each product can legitimate uh, the other products. And in this idea, also the spectators that are receiving these uh, contents are part, of course, of this creation. Um, there are many different ways of creating uh, participation of the audience and engagement of the audience. Uh, um, probably the most easy one to, 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 to see is the idea of uh, put the people into the piece of art. I mean, all these works uh, of uh, participatory art. I mean, uh, audience engage directly in the piece of art in which they can be part of, uh, you know, something. Uh, another idea is uh, to create uh, audience interaction, interaction. I mean, uh, creating an interactive narrative with your attendees to create a desired outcome, like in the Rimini Protocol case we were speaking uh, about before. I mean, people is invited to interact with the artists. And the third uh, way, it's we were speaking about uh, uh, before with the visionary, I mean, the idea that the spectators, they remain spectators, but they have an active role, so I mean, their points of view are taking in count uh, for, uh, you know, preparing uh, programming of a festival or, or something similar. Why we do that? Um, I think we are in the middle, probably, of two possibilities. I mean, uh, in one side, uh, uh, is something linked with uh, marketing strategies. But in the other side, uh, it's linked with uh, educational strategies. Uh, telling the truth, I'm not totally convinced by mm, any one of the two perspectives. I mean, uh, my idea is uh, we are more speaking about an attitude. Uh, something that uh, Mm, encourage us to, to look uh, at our work from a different perspective. I mean, all these uh, mm, uh, goals uh, are uh, linked with the idea of audience engagement. I mean, uh, the, the idea of enlarging the number of audience uh, to meet the needs of the potential audience, uh, to engage new audiences, to improve the competencies of the existing audience. For instance, uh, a project like the Visionary don't enlarge the number of the audience. Uh, it's not a quantitative approach. Uh, it's more qualitative. I mean, so probably it responds to the fourth, uh, for the fourth need. I mean, they improve the competencies of existing of the existing audience. Of course, what is happen, what it happens with them, is that many times they are able to. Uh, to engage new people. Many times I remember some of them saying, uh, oh, tonight, uh, uh, tomorrow I will bring my dentist because he has absolutely to see this show because for me it's the best one. Or oh, tomorrow I will bring my cousin. I will bring so sometimes they are ambassadors of our work. But, you know, I think it's minimal. There are many other marketing strategy much more uh, you know interesting uh, than this one 
this one is more useful for uh, a qualitative uh, approach uh, for uh, you know and it's also responding probably to something that is is uh, part of our uh, of our uh, time i mean uh, the inclusion of consumers in of con say consumers in the question of value i'm not a sociologist of course probably some of you are much more uh, um, you know documented than me speaking about that but uh, we can see that all the co-creational practices uh, are part uh, of the of the experience of the time so people are requesting to be part of something yes i show here the picture of the nutella something strongly italian uh, with the name of the people so you buy this uh, this box of nutella because it's written your name so it's, it's an idea of course it's a marketing idea but the, the the, the, the idea that uh, uh, you are you are part of the creation of the value of something is something uh, that is in the air of our time. Um, in the introduction, uh, we were speaking about cultural democracy. Uh, I think that this experience, uh, uh, as a visionary, but not only this one, are for mm, people. Of all the table where cultural decisions are taken. Uh, uh, also, some of them were speaking about a sense of belonging. I mean, this festival is not something that I receive, like something already done, but it's my festival. It's something that I'm creating with other people. So the idea of ownership of the cultural venue is something that we have to take in count, I think. It could be really interesting. I mean, people have to, to be the feeling that their presence make a difference. Uh, if they are there, if they express uh, their point of view, something changed. The final decision can be different. I mean, of course, uh, you need the authenticity on that. Uh, cannot be something that you do as if it was. Uh, it has to be real, because people otherwise they don't participate. Uh, so it has to be risky. It has to be an adventure. It has to be something open to the unknown. Many times my visionary, they select something that I don't like to touch. Uh, and probably I would prefer something different. But I think uh, sometimes they are right. So sometimes I discover some proposal from uh, companies that I say at the end, they were right. Uh, the show is good, uh, the, you know. Many other times I think I'm right, uh, but it's not so important. Uh, what is important is the process. This, uh, you know, sense of belonging, the, the fact that they are doing a difference uh, on that. Uh, this is Ben Wolfley. Many of you probably know him because uh, he's uh, working in the Leeds University. So, uh, and I think uh, this uh, this uh, shift from the four P to the four E is very interesting. Uh, I mean, uh, in this idea of uh, activating the participation of people, he says that uh, uh, we move from creating products to creating experiences. And uh, we pass through uh, promotion to engagement, uh, to, to create a strategies based on the price of the tickets, uh, on something uh, focused on exchanges of values from places uh, to environment, something more uh, large in which you can enter and to feel to be part of something and Ben uh, says that future organization I think uh, this is a very interesting sentence uh, future organization will be artistically led but audience centric I mean I think it's important to underline that we are not speaking about the idea to substitute uh, the experts uh, of course the competencies that some of us uh, uh, have developed during their uh, professional experience uh, 
are absolutely useful and they will continue to be useful. We are speaking about the idea of sharing with other people ideas, points of view, and to be also inspired uh, by your audience. Because many times um, we speak uh, at their place uh, without knowing them. But sometimes uh, open yourself to li really listen the needs of the people can bring uh, to some discoveries really interesting, especially in a field like art, in which you have to be open to, you know, to new visions. This slide is not mine, it's better than the others. I mean, uh, the layout is much better. It's done by our friend uh, Luisella Carnelli from Fiscarrado, but I think it's a good one. I mean, uh, uh, at the end of this uh, speech, what I would like to leave to you is uh, that audience development is not uh, uh, a project that you do once. It's a change of mind. It's a strategical approach. Uh, it's something uh, that you cannot uh, uh, put only in a specific department of theater. So these people are taking care of the audience development. It's, it has to, to be part of all the activities, including the points of view, the vision of the artist. I mean, the, the new challenge we have in front of us, uh, it's uh, to invite artists uh, to consider their audience as part of their creative process. It doesn't mean that they have to, to follow the taste of the audience. First of all, it doesn't exist, uh, the taste of the audience. We have the tastes of the audiences, if we want. But it's not that, uh, it's not following something, it's, you know, staying in contact, uh, thinking on uh, which are the people you are speaking with, creating your piece of art. Uh, mm, some of the problems we have focused during the, the process of Be Spectacular, but also in San Sepolcro with the, with, the, with the Visionary, is that these processes uh, are, um, the risk is that many times you convoke some elites, uh, so some people that are already interested in arts. Uh, so one of the most important work we try to do is to invite the people that are far from us to be part of the group. Sometimes it's not easy. The first thing many of them say is, Oh, but I'm not an expert. But, and then we say, okay, for that reason we want you. <laughs> for that reason we want to work with you. Uh, of course, then uh, we have to manage the legacies of this process. When someone uh, stops to be a visionary, how we can remain in contact with him? How we can uh, already continue this discussion, this, uh, uh, you know, this common, uh, ah, it's, it's late, okay. Uh, so, participation is not a gift donated by someone to others. Uh, um, people's intelligence and sensibility are convocated to, to demonstrate the existence of a real desire to share a common thinking about art. So, I mean, people that are part of this process, they have to be responsible of something. And in my experience, the more you ask, the more you obtain. You don't have to reduce the request because you say, oh, they don't understand that. People are much more intelligent than we think, uh, more sensitive. If it's clear the context in which they are working, uh, so for them it's clear, I'm speaking about the visionary, for them it's clear what is Kilowatt, that is a festival devoted to contemporary theater, uh, experimental dance. Uh, so if the context is clear, if the request is clear, people are able to understand and to respond to that. Uh, um, and in my opinion, the request of cultural democracy failed every time that was given from the height. Every time that 
someone arrives for teaching to someone else something, it starts uh, who are you for teaching me something? I think uh, arts is also you know, a content in which people need to be free. To, to be part of an artistic process has to be mm, amazing. It cannot be boring, like being a school where someone is teaching you something. I mean, I'm not speaking uh, against the school, of course. <laughs> it's important in some ages of the life of people to go to school and to learn something. But when you are an, an adult, uh, I think uh, you can arrive at the same results uh, thanks to different processes. Uh, and at the end, uh, if I to, to leave you a sentence uh, that is the result of my experience, is that the legacy of these processes uh, is not in the number of people participating, uh, is not in this role of the ambassadors, but is in the shift of the vision of the people. Many of the people, when they arrive being part of the group of uh, the visionary, they say to me, for, for instance, uh, yes, but don't give me videos of dance, because I don't understand anything about dance. This is the, the, <laughs> the very common phrase. And uh, what is happening, but it, it, that was, uh, I don't know, two months ago, uh, we had this night with a contemporary dance company, not particularly interesting, and, and one of the visionaries went to me and uh, said, uh, yeah, it was not bad, but um, not, not enough experimental, in my opinion. I think it's that, the, the real legacy of this type of project. So people probably they don't perceive, but day after day, they are doing a shift of the way in which they are looking at the arts and they are Thank you very much, uh, Luca, for this inspiring talk. And I uh, think that it's not a problem that we're kind of a bit late on the schedule because we're late on the schedule in the beginning of the session. And I think we're going to have uh, quite a lot of questions uh, here. But I would like to use my privileged position uh, to kind of ask you uh, an initial question. I very much liked. Uh, um, the part when you uh, kind of highlighted the responsibility of artists, the responsibility of the spectators themselves and kind of shifting uh, this role and putting people outside of their comfort zone and, and sharing of, of the experiences. But uh, I would like to kind of um, go back to the, to the previous, uh, previous uh, presentation and ask you more about some of the issues that you already mentioned and uh, that reflected also were reflected in the previous pre uh, presentation and that is about the inequalities in the in the in the pr production distribution and uh, participation in culture so how did you kind of grapple with that in the visionary uh, project uh, what uh, what were your experiences who did not kind of uh, participate uh, in it uh, uh, kind of who wasn't participating, who wasn't co-creating, and how did you grapple with that, with that issue? And actually, how do you see this visionary action research method uh, would well or not uh, well be translated in these 38 cities that are participating in the project? So uh, you said that it's difficult to replicate something like this on a larger scale. But how do you see kind of problems in the translation of such a concept, of such a method in other cities, in other kind of communities? What kind of comes uh, from your experience? Um, I start from the second question, if you, if you agree. Um, I think the problem is not to do the same thing in other cities. I mean, uh, I think the, um, a project like this uh, is strongly local. It's clear. I mean, it's requested to be together, to see people by face, 
you cannot do that by, by uh, the social media. I mean, in the framework of this perspective, we tried to do an interaction among uh, spectators all around Europe uh, through the social media. It was a disaster. First of all, probably because uh, we were wrong in the selection of the artists engaged on that, but probably because the social media are a space for different type of activities. You don't have uh, the time, the, the will to go deeply on that uh, as uh, you need uh, in a process like this. So the process are strongly local, but the, the visionary is uh, it's a format. So it's completely replicable with differences according to the, to the needs of the different, uh, you know, uh, of the different mm, partners. Uh, before I was saying, uh, um, I don't know, I can, I can tell you the, the project that was done by one of, the, um, one of our previous partners in this spectacular lift uh, festival in London. They decided to apply this format with, only with class of the primary school and all with the same class for four years. So this group of uh, young uh, students, uh, children, they selected two shows for the, for the Lift Festival. The festival is biennial, so they worked for five, five years, four years, sorry, for selecting two shows, one after two years and another one after other two years. So in this case, the format is the same, but it's completely different, the context in which you are applying uh, this, and also the results. So the problem is not to do every where the same thing. The, the most important thing is the idea of activating people, also to, to express this, uh, you know, this topic of participation. First, as first question, um, how we can use this type of project for uh, working with the people that are more refractory, more distant or far from us? Um, this idea of lift, uh, it's an answer. For, for instance, I mean, uh, to work every, every year, uh, every week uh, with the same class uh, in a specific area in the suburbs of London. I mean, uh, an area li like Tottenham with some problems and things like that. I mean, it's uh, an opportunity. Of course, probably if you want to engage people that are not interested at all in arts, probably the participatory artworks are more, uh, uh, effective. I mean, uh, uh, to, to ask a group of migrants uh, that they don't speak your language to, to be part uh, of, a, of an art community problem, if you do, if you organize a community art work, uh, it's easier than a process like uh, the visionary in which you have to see video, discuss with other people. I mean, According to the goal you have, uh, you have to, de to develop different projects of participation. Participation is not one recipe useful for everything. I mean, it's uh, a perspective, but you have to decline this perspective in many different ways according to the, to the needs uh, you have to respond to. Hi, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, one thing that somehow escapes my understanding is the way you use the concept of value through the presentation. Uh, uh, at some points, it's clearly economical value when you talk about the consumers and their participative act of producing the value, then it is about the cultural value, then uh, sometimes I understood that participation is a value in itself, and so on. So my question is, how do you valorize and how does it influence the valorization models of the organization in which you work? Because at one point you argument that people pay their part, but then they also work, do some work for the organization. So are they paid in the end for what they do? Uh, and how the work that is done in that participation, which clearly produces value somewhere, and it's rarely value of everybody, but of a few, as we know from the economy, 
uh, how does it uh, reclaim the problem of value as we know it from the economy? This is a 20 question in, in one. Okay, no, thank you. Um, Uh, the, easiest one, the easiest answer is uh, no, they are not paid, they are volunteers. Uh, um, and I think it's important. More than that, sometimes they have to pay. I mean, not for the work, but I mean, uh, um, what we discovered after this project is that they became another small group among them. And so we said, okay, oh, this is not working because uh, the idea is that they have to be also, uh, you know, uh, part of our project in the city with other people. So what we ask to them is, uh, uh, of course, uh, for the nine shows uh, selected by them, they have free entrance, of course. But for all the other shows that we present during the year, they have free entrance if they bring another person. Because uh, we want to engage them also in this aspect. I mean... Uh, uh, to, to be part of the, you know, the spreading of the, of the cultural uh, values presented in the, in the theater. And uh, speaking about values, the, the, um, the point of view from where I use the word value, um, in one part of my speech uh, I spoke about, uh, um, I mean, the creation of value uh, in the present time uh, implies the idea that people feel to be part of something. Uh, so in this moment I was speaking from, uh, if I can use this word, a sociological point of view. I mean, uh, creation of value, something that you feel is important if you are part of it. Uh, then, uh, in general, uh, I use the word value uh, from the perspective of the cultural value of what we are doing. So defending the sense of theater or dance or arts as a part of, uh, you know, social, uh, social discourse, a social, uh, social aspect of, uh, of the life, of the community, of creation of community. I don't know if I've answered to your question because in, in more or less, no, okay. We can continue later probably if I, if I was not clear enough. Uh, thank, you for thank you for sharing. Um, I'm interested in that last quote that you, you gave of the, um, about whether the, the, um, the change of uh, perspective, whether the performance had been experimental enough. Um, have you found that the role of the visionary has has it allowed the the performers to to take more risks, um, for example, in using public spaces? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the the thing most important for me of the work of the visionary is the the form that they have to fill. Because uh, we send uh, all these uh, feedbacks uh, to the companies that participated to the selection. And starting from this point, uh, many times happened, not every time, but many times happened, uh, a discussion between the artists uh, and the visionary. Uh, and I think this is uh, an important part of our project because uh, they are doing uh, a work of scouting, so discovering new companies. Uh, they are giving visibility to, to new artists because the main part of the artists participating to the selection of the visionary are emerging artists. But in my opinion, probably they are also influencing new creations. Probably, so they are working on shows already finished. So they, saw, they see the videos of shows already finished. But 
mm, our idea is that probably their feedbacks sometimes, uh, not every time, but can be useful to the artist for rethinking their, uh, you know, their way of creating, uh, for taking more risk, uh, for taking in a different count the perspective uh, of the spectator. So it's impossible to, to measure this, uh, this aspect, I think. Uh, how much uh, the audience can influence um, the, you know, the innovation of the arts. I think it's impossible to, to measure exactly that. But what I think it's important is to, to let the audience enter in the discussion. Don't think that art is something only for artists uh, or for specialists, but is something, uh, you know, that is um, part of the life of everyone. I mean, uh, uh, from the beginning of the humanity, art was uh, a way of expression for human beings. So, what I think, uh, you don't need special um, uh, skills for understanding art. Art is understandable to everyone. Of course, if you have more skills, uh, more experience, uh, you can go probably deeply, but I don't know if deeply is the right word. Probably you can see from uh, a more uh, cultural perspective, but probably without all these skills, uh, you can bring to art uh, another vision that is uh, important at the same level. So. I don't know how the spectators can uh, can help, how much the spectators ca can help art to be more uh, open, risky, and uh, interesting. Uh, and, uh, but for sure, art without spectators is not useful at all. Without, uh, especially especially performing arts that are done for now. So you, you think how crazy it is to leave your home in the Netflix era. You are at home, you have this very beautiful screen, you can have uh, more or less uh, everything that you want. You decide to go out, to go to a theater, probably it's raining, uh, probably you are tired at the end of a uh, day of work. You go there and you are considered only passive consumer of something. No, excuse me, you are an hero. So you are part of our community. So we need you, your vision, your perspective, your point of view, your ideas are important for us that we are on stage. Because probably without you, we don't exist. And so, mm, so we are not producing uh, uh, salami that I produce the salami and then I put the salami on the supermarket and you can buy the salami. No, it's something different. We are producing emotions. We are producing contacts among human beings. So why don't consider them as part of the creation? I would like to use the opportunity for uh, hearing one more question to the floor. Do we have Karen Kroen from the Museum Trapal in Denmark. Um, I'm a bit curious on your group. I really love your project. I'm going to try and do a copy some kind in Denmark. <laughs> but I uh, really like the concept and the idea. But I'm curious on, on whether you have the same mm, challenges as I al also find working this way. And my challenge is that I might invite in a group of people to participate and to bring in their values and their eyes. And then what I frequently find is that they actually bring in a very conventional idea about what art should be. And I'm just curious on two things. One is when you created it initially, 
did you find that they were very conventional, like, which, which is my experience? Mm -hmm. And how did you work with that? And then I noticed your final sentence actually was, and now I hear them saying, this is not experimental enough. And when I hear you saying that, then I hear you saying, now they're beginning to think like I think, which is the right way to think. So, so what are your reflections on this? The, what they bring in, which is conventional, their ability to think out of the box, and then which box is the right one? Okay. To share for the second uh, question, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's really interesting. Now, the first one, I have a secret word, uh, very secret but I will tell you. Um, the first meeting uh, with the visionary were interesting because uh, they were expressing their points of view, but sometimes, uh, it was 2006, uh, see, six, yes. So before uh, the Facebook uh, era, in which you push the button, you, you decide, I like, I don't like. But many times they were saying, I like. And so the secret word is, why? What, when I go to the, uh, when I was to the first meeting, many times they were saying, and which is your opinion? And sometimes I did the wrong thing, so, I mean, uh, I say to them what was my opinion, but then uh, I stopped to do that, so now I don't go at all to their meeting. I only go to the first and to the last one, that's all. Of course, there is a person of my staff, uh, Michele, that you saw before, following or the, word, uh, or the work with them, but uh, uh, not me. But asking to people to, to specify why they like or they dislike something, it's a way for uh, uh, inviting them to be less conventional. I mean, uh, many times we express uh, our points of view in generic way, especially using the social media. We are really used to, you know, to express ideas without thinking the consequences, uh, I mean, but when you are requested to, to specify why you have this opinion, uh, you are obliged to go deeply and to interrogate yourself, I think, uh, and to ask to yourself uh, what art can bring to you. I mean, uh, art uh, for me is not the the final goal of everything. Uh, in this type of projects, uh, so probably in my life, yes, but is this type of project, art is the medium for something. I mean, uh, is the opportunity, thanks to, it's the opportunity for people to interrogate themselves. Uh, I mean, uh, it's an opportunity to create citizenship, to, to create discussion. I don't think people at the end are conventional. I mean, if you, if you give to the people shit every day, they start to eat shit. But uh, if you help them to find uh, other opportunities, uh, good things are appreciated by everyone. I mean, uh, it's also mm, a matter of uh, numbers, I mean, uh, you need to, to give to the people the opportunities to see not only one, but more than one, two, three, four, five good things. So when they, they start to have the habits uh, to see things that move something in the brain, in the heart, uh, whatever you want, uh, so after that, people, they know what is interesting, and then they search again that.